Hello, my lovely, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are reacting to Charlie XCX's new album called Brat. Wow. This is her sixth album and this is really, really awesome. I mean, I love the 90s song, of course. I loved her song, Good Ones, The Good Ones. I loved her collaborations with many, many artists. Charlie has done bits. And today we're going to be reacting to her latest album, which the reason why I'm so excited is because I specifically love Charlie's production. I really like the sounds. I love this like pop sound that she has that is different. You know, it's not something that we hear constantly on the radio. It's, it's very production-y. Like, I love it. So my interest in here is... Is it going to be the same thing? Is it going to be that Charlie sound that we are so used to? Or are we going to hear something different? The cover of the album, Brat, is this very bright green. And some people were like, why is that? Okay. Some people were not happy about it. But Charlie explained that there's a larger concept behind her choices, which is uh, drawn from her inspiration behind the music on the album. As well as she said, I'd like for us to question our expectations of pop culture. Why are some things considered good and acceptable and some things deemed bad? I'm interested in the narratives behind that and I want to provoke people. I'm not doing things to be nice. Hmm. So she's purposely provoking and doing controversial things to start the conversations. And this is what I'm interested about, what the lyrics are about. And I'm going to be looking at the Spotify lyrics and seeing, obviously, reading through. And at the end, I'm going to let you know, guys, which songs are my favorite. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you my top three and I'm going to overall score from one to five stars this album and see how I feel. To all the fans of Charlie XCX, hi, how are you guys? Obviously, this is my personal opinion and, it, and I know that a lot of you love, love her music to death. So don't take anything I say personally. It's just how I feel. And of course, we live in a world that has different tastes, different styles, different feels. So... Um, we all are different. I'm not going to be able to show you and play the whole album on this video. So you're just going to see my reactions and of course the overall comments after I listen to the song. We're going to start off with 360. Ooh, so this is the first track and we of course following the track order because that's what you should do when you listen to the albums because that's how the artists intend them to go. So I do 100% recommend for you guys to follow the order. 360, let's go. Okay, very chill start. Very chill start to the album. And it's very Charlie XCX. The more you listen to it, the more like you get into it. This one could be good for TikTok, you know? Hey, this was the first track, 360. How I feel about it? Hmm. It's very sassy. Do you have like this I don't care feeling to it, which I really like. It's very chill. So for me, like obviously when you start the album, it's either like this or it is like they added like this one minute intro kind of build up. So this is the beginning of the album. It's only two minute long song, so it's quite short still. But it's giving that, like, carefree feeling to it, you know? Usually the first song sets the vibe. But sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see if it does or it doesn't. <laughs> um, do I like the song? I think it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Let's go. So the next one is called Club Classics. We do have only 15 songs on this album, which is still plenty. But it's uh, exciting. Let's go. Oh, Club Classics, I like it already. Okay, yes. I love the production on this. Again, I want to dance. The synths are good. <laughs> we got the wobble wobble music. <laughs> Very liquidy, this kind of... Yes! This is so UK, I love it! Wow. 
Okay. This was amazing. Wow. When I said, like, the previous song was okay, right? This, I love. I love everything about it. Uh, I want to go into credits for the productions on this. So we got Daniel, uh, George Daniel on, on the songwriting and produced by A.G. Cook and George Daniel. What an amazing production. Like, seriously, I love that. It's so, like, I love that it's called Club Classics because you do feel like you're in a club, but also it's so reminiscent to me when I was growing up in the UK and I was I was in college. So college is between 16 to 19 years old. And you, like, it's like high school, right? And um, in the UK, you would have this, like, <laughs> I, don't, I can't even say it because it's YouTube, but um, they call it, like, music for the partying if you know what i mean and uh, they would play this music and it's like everyone in the clubs just um off their face basically <laughs> so this is the vibe that i love that it's there because it is a classic for me personally when i was growing up and i'm not that old yet but um i love that this is great this is my fave so far, I mean, only two songs in, but I love it. Okay, the next song sounds like it might be a little bit sad. It's called Sympathy is a Knife. Wow. What a name. I Not sad. Ooh, love the vocals. It is sad, but like... This is dark. The lyrics with this song are insane. the song so lyrically i think i was paying attention to this song the most so far and it's actually really sad like it's quite explicit in the way we are feeling the same feeling of jealousy of course you feel like you're you want to be her because the boy you like is with that girl the lyric that she said don't want to see her backstage at my boyfriend's show Fingers crossed behind my back. I hope they break up quick. So this lyric was like, wait, is he your boyfriend? Is he not your boyfriend? Because in, in your head, he's your boyfriend, but he's with someone else and you're just hoping they break up. Let's be honest, a lot of us felt this way, but we obviously feel guilty to say it out loud. But I feel like Charlie was very open and real about this in here couldn't even be her if I tried. That is so sad. I think a lot of us and a lot of like, younger girls feel this way and boys as well when you know we don't get to be liked by someone we really really like how it feels to me is like when you're young you have this song that is production wise very like yeah you know and then when it comes to lyrics you're like okay the lyrics are messed up so you it this is kind of like the, that teenage feeling that you get in you when you are a teenager i don't care but also i care you know i care so i love that she's using her sound in this this is a really cool way of getting over that feeling the next song is called i might say something stupid <laughs> put your hand up if you've been there i say stupid things all the time i feel like i'm gonna relate to this really well this is the shortest song on the album it's one minute it's only one minute 49 so let's hear it Ooh. Oh, this is nice. Okay. Oh my god, how nice. The chord progression is changing. So like if you listen pop music, kind of have the same four chord progression, but here you have these like minor chords sliding in. Like they're just like these very close chords that shouldn't be there, but they are there and they still sound so good. <gasps> Beautiful writing. Very cool. Very, very cool. I go so cold. I don't feel like nothing special. But I'm perfect for the background. I don't know if I belong here anymore. I... <gasps> wow. I feel like this song is so relatable to so many musicians out there. 
And trust me, a lot of musicians would love to be in Charlie's position to get where she is and uh, feel sorry for her because she's saying that, guess I'm a mess, play the role, used to live just for the party, door is open. I'm famous, but not quite. Oh. But I'm perfect for the background. I'm famous, but not quite, but I'm perfect for the background. That's just... Uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of musicians feel this way. Like, not even... Like, she is big. Charlie is huge. Let's be honest. She's done a lot of things. But imagine if, even if she feels this way. Like, that's crazy. Wow. So we had two quite different moods. We went from club classics, partying, moving, dancing, feeling free to, okay, the emotions are out. This is how I feel. And we're moving on to the fifth track on the album, which is Talk Talk. Okay, let's let's listen. I've been looking at you. This is gonna be a dance tune. We've been talking for months. I wish you talk, talk, wish you talk, talk. Really interesting vocals on this. The vocals on this track almost feel like they're on purpose, not perfect. Like they don't actually like they almost have like this not very good auto-tune plugging on them that make the the sound so fluctuating it almost feels like she's off pitch so it's like interesting how they did the production on the vocals on this track this <laughs> i love how to to Ooh, i love this ha huh, this is another banger Ooh. I don't think it's as obviously club classics still my fave, but this is like really good one. I love that the last bit talk to me in French, talk to me in Spanish, talk to me in your own made up language. Doesn't matter if I understand it. Talk right in my ear. Tell me your secrets and fears. Love, love this. And the way it was like, it just was so flowy and so nicely done in the production it's like it's like this house clubby song and i think i would just love to see this performed on the stage this whole set of uh, of the sound and how she would do it if there's going to be like actual synths people playing the instruments because it's all produced sounds right but you can't play it on like uh electric drums on synths on keyboards and all that stuff so it would be really fun to see them performing it. And how would they manipulate her vocals? Because there's so many effects on her vocals, as I said, uh, that they're using. I would love to see this. All right. We have the next song, which is called One Dutch. I think it's One Dutch. I don't know. One Dutch. <laughs> um, but this was the single release that she started her album with. So she came out with a song. I don't think I've heard it before. I don't think I watched the video. I wanted to react to it, but again, I was traveling. I wasn't able to. Yeah, let's uh, let's move on to the song. So first time hearing it, let's see. Okay, I have heard that thing on the radio. Ooh. Yeah, I've heard this song. Nice. Woo! So good. I am the production. It's so good. Fire! What a brilliant freaking song. Loved it. Loved it so much. No wonder it was the lead single. No wonder. It's so brilliantly produced and so catchy and so cool. And just I, you just feel cool, okay? And I love the lyrics. Why are you lying? You went F unless he famous. T? Yes, I'm sipping the tea. I love it. It's just this this vibe is so so good. Okay, definitely have my top three already, <laughs> but I need to listen to the rest. Okay, we're moving on to everything is romantic. So this might be romantic, sad, slow. I don't know. Let's see. Whoa. This is giving me Ray vibes. 
Jesus. They're, they're unexpected. I'm excited. Here we go. We got Charlie. The production. Guys, I have no idea. This is like production ear candy over and over and over. it's just the pro oh, I love wow and we got raindrops <gasps> guys that was amazing oh my gosh I don't wow what do I do with my brain this is so amazingly produced the amount of layering elements the use of the effects the ear candies the vocals oh my goodness we are moving on to rewind let's go sometimes the lyrics are good. Sometimes, but on CDs full of songs I didn't know used to sit. Sometimes, this is insane. This is actually insane. I want to produce like this. This is incredible. Sometimes, yeah, press rewind. That was so cool. That was sad and also cool because uh, this is the second song now that she's talking about her struggles with the uh, uh, fame um, or not being good enough for it and or just, you know, not, not being happy with it. And I'm very grateful, very grateful when artists are talking about this and they don't sugarcoat things and don't make them look like they're amazing. So production wise, this was insane. Again, this was so different so interesting so cool like i i love to hear something new and different and this is what i love to hear this is amazing okay so here's the thing the lyric where she said i used to never feel embarrassed feel embarrassed when i call up the paparazzi everyone else does it constantly that's crazy i love that she's mentioning that and i used to never think about billboard but now I'm starting to think again. Hmm. Well, Billboard magazine, you got mentioned. I think they actually said something about this line. I saw an article that they were discussing about this. So the next song we are moving to is So I. It's okay to cry. So I know I very, 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 very cool way of not making it repetitive and boring the way she's changing the melody to go and higher this is the first song that we i'm hearing that is so far sounds like a radio chart song that i think was strategically put in this album for that reason to um meet the standards of the typical radio sound so this is the first song that has that radio sound oh, Oh, that's a really good lyric. Is there gonna be this crazy Charlie XAX drop? That's the question. Hmm. Oh. Loved again. I loved this song. Very interesting because I was so confused at first. Lyrically, I was really invested into the song. Almost felt like a romantic song again about love and all of that stuff. But then when she started saying that when I'm on stage, sometimes I lie, say that I love singing these songs that you left behind. So I, was still, I thought, okay, maybe it's uh, because she wrote songs about the heartbreak and like that. But then she says, your words brutal, loving, truthful. I was petrified. You're a hero and a human. Track was gone. I'd made excuses. You would say, come on, stay for dinner. I'd say, no, I'm fine. 
You had power like lightning strike when I'm on stage sometimes. I lie. And then it says, guilty feelings keep me fractured. Got a phone call after Christmas. Didn't know how I should act. I watched you dance online. Your sounds, your words live on endless. When I make songs, I remember things you suggest. Make it faster. Would you like this one? Your star burns so bright. You had a power like a lightning strike. A very, very, very interesting and personal song that I have no idea what it's about. There's two perspectives that I understand is either someone passed away and they left, um, you know, this feeling in, in her, like uh, maybe her producer or songwriter, it seems like it's, uh, or like a manager. Um, or there's a darker side to this is that the, it's, uh, this dark side of the industry where something happened during her music journey that left things behind and hurt and pain. I wouldn't want to judge based on such a little information on what happened here, but if you are aware of what this is about, let me know in the comments. Production-wise, is the first song that sounded very radio, like sounding very soft. There's no like these crazy, intense pop synth sounds then but then lyrically i was really invested and i realized okay maybe it needed to be this way so i pay attention to lyrics you know it had this really sad feel to it okay so we have a next song called girl so confusing do you guys relate to this Ah. Wow. Okay. There's definitely a story behind this that I don't know if this is imaginary, if this is just the feeling of, you know, um, being friends with someone that you kind of don't really want to be friends with or don't see anything in common, but because you're girls and you look similar, then you kind of forced to be friends. Or this is something about a, a person that we know is a real person that is in music industry that potentially people would be crazy about to see a collab with Charlie and them and I wonder who that is I don't I personally have no clue who this could be about and um, maybe you guys are a little bit more aware of the situation but yeah the song is okay like I was again paying more attention to the lyrics the production was still pretty cool right we are moving on to the last five songs and the next one is called Apple <laughs> Is this about family? Ooh, nice production again. <gasps> Whoa! Love that lyric. Okay, this is getting better and better. This song. Ah, huh, wow. This song really surprised me because. Um, at first I was like, okay, it's, uh, it's similar to the previous one in, in a feel, but then the lyrics got so good and the, the rhythm changed and the, the, they introduced this, like this old, old school sound to it, which I really loved. And the first lyric goes, I guess the apple don't fall far from the tree. Cause I've been looking at you so long. Now I only see, I want to throw the apple into the sky. <laughs> And then in the next bit, it says, oh my gosh, the, it, the way it was uh, so smartly changed. I think the apples rotten right to the core <laughs> from all the things passed down, from all the apples coming before. Oh my goodness. That is interesting because is she talking about her family or is she talking about society as a whole or... I think this song could be quite personal, but you know, when you say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, it's usually when you relate to like a family member. So maybe this is like a song about her family, which uh, does sound a bit sad and toxic, to be honest. But um, hope everything is okay. And we can only speculate, we can only make assumptions. Anything written can be an inspiration. It, it might not be related to Charlie's life. So that's the thing. It's, it's, it's art and you see it the way you see it. If you look too hard into it and you analyze it too much, then it could 
it could <laughs> make your brain go crazy. B2B is the next song that we're listening to. Let's go. Ah, back to you. Uh, what a banger. This could be great in a club. Very repetitive, very repetitive. I want to see where it goes. I want to see what they're going to do with the production. How do you come up with these ideas? It's so genius. This is so good. Wow. At first one, it was just going over and over, repeating itself over and over. I was like, oh, please change, do something here. And then the master of production came in and gave me like this absolutely wonderful, incredibly talenting, talenting, talented, oh my God, change that just flew so well. And oh, I love it. I, I honestly, I can't say anything about this production because it's so genius it's genius it's filled with so many creative new ideas that i was looking for in pop you know pop is so constantly the same <laughs> you know and then this is something that is so ge geniusly calculated or maybe accidentally calculated, I don't know, but it just sounds so good. I feel like this song, B2B, can definitely be remixed and done so well for TikTok. If they increase the tempo and do like this like fast version of this song, it could go so good and viral on TikTok. And then also could do so many remixes for the clubs for this song. It's just filled with the perfect things in there that you can use. And I love it. Three songs left. We got Mean Girls. Is this inspired by the film Mean Girls? Or is it just the song? Let's see. Yeah, it's 2 a.m. And she's out there. This one's for all my mean girls. This one's for all my bad girls. This Wait, can you hear that? Do, 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 do. That, that synth is the sample from the famous... Uh, ooh. Uh, what's our song? You know that song. <laughs> you know it, right? That's synth. And the lyrics just completely... Oh my goodness. The lyrics um, went like completely from... Okay, is she talking about someone else? But then it got very dark very quick. This song is crazy. And we got jazzy piano. I want to dance to this song, but the lyrics are so crazy. Uh, this song was a shocker. A lot of the songs were a shocker, but this song was particularly a shocker because it went from like me just chilling by a bit and then the lyrics just went completely dark about the you say she's anorexic and you heard she likes when people say it that's mm. i'm not sure about this lyric i don't know if she's talking about from her experience and something that she's saying that people said about her which is quite crazy anyways there were a lot of lyrics that were quite controversial in this song and um I can't really comment on this. I don't really understand it to understand it and to explain how I feel about it. But the, the, the lyrics really, really shocked me. And she's kind of effed up, but she's still in a vogue. Yeah, she's in her mid-twenties, real intelligent. And we hate the fact that she's New York City's darling. Huh. Okay, someone needs to explain this to me. This song particularly. Lyrically, please explain. Am I understanding this wrong? Am I am I am I deepening it too much? I need to know. Again, I love the production so much on this. This was so much fun production wise, and I loved that simp do 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 do. And that's you know, it's uh, I don't know if it's the same sample from the song that we all know, or it's uh, just accidentally sounds the same. 
uh, or similar, I don't know, let me know. On the 14th track right now, I think about it all the time. Let's go. I think about it all the time. That I might run out of time. That baby. Ooh, the vocals the are so interesting time. on this. How sublime. What a joy. Oh my, oh my. I think about it all the time. That I might run out of time. So, we had a conversation on the way home. Should I stop my birth control? Because my career feels so small in the existential scheme of it all. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think about it all the time. Oh, wow. That is um, very personal, very personal song. I was very confused at first what, what it's about because I wasn't sure if this is like imaginary thing, if it's just like a story from the past or like inspiration from something. I think obviously there's a body clock, right, for women. Um, we can only have babies to a certain age. And I think a lot of older you know, that the life is not the same as it was even like 20 years ago or like when our parents were having babies, you know. It's a lot difficult nowadays to sustain the family or to, to be in that same family-orientated thing that you have to... It's a very career-orientated nowadays. And when she said, because my career feels so small in the extent scheme of it all, should I stop my birth control? We do see that artists that are female, they tend to have kids once they make it or once they made it, you know, um, that's when they can settle down because uh, the freedom becomes available after they, the record labels are happy or the music industry is happy and then they can then finally take a break. And, you know, um, sometimes your career that you imagined in your head uh, being a musician doesn't work out and you don't become famous or you don't become the big superstar and you kind of like think well all that time is gone all that time that I invested in to every single day you know into this one thing should I just give up and have normal life you know we have the final song which is called 365 which I just noticed that it started with 360 and now it's 365 so we've got 360 degrees and 365 uh, I believe 365, like year, days in a year. So 360 degrees, 365. Or maybe there's a different meaning, I don't know. But we are finishing our album listening session. Let's go. Oh, it continues. Ah, oh, it's the same. Okay. Intro and outro. Okay, cool. Oh, talking about drugs, should we do a little key? Should we have a little line? Wanna go real wild when I'm, meet me in the bathroom if you're pumping that. Okay, well, that is, that is another thing that's really sad about the music industry is that not even in the music industry, in a whole in recent years, I, I see so many people doing drugs and young people sitting on it thinking it's a normal thing and I do not promote that at all and I'm actually really sad that it's kind of becoming a norm that so many people are doing it so many I don't want to say that it's cool please don't think it's cool it's actually a real problem that is happening and it's becoming so normalized so please don't normalize it. Till the windows crack, I'll be bumping that. No, I'll never go home, don't sleep, don't eat, just do it on repeat key. No, I really don't stop when I'm gonna die. Crazy! Down 999, it's a good time. Charlie! Why? Why, Charlie? Ooh. Whoa, sick. They're definitely pumping it. You don't even need drugs to feel the pump. What a genius way to do the intro and outro. What a genius way. So this is the intro again. Let me just... So like it flows very, very like... In again, it did feel like an intro and an outro, which uh, I think they did a very good job with that for sure am i sad about charlie doing drugs well i'm not surprised that that is happening i say like 
up 90% of musicians in the music industry are on drugs or doing drugs or like it is really 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 sad and I mean uh, if she's openly talking about it then um I'm not saying she is doing it but let, let's let's be real this album was very um I say again I don't know how to describe that word but it's very like okay um but also there were quite raw and open you know conversations in there so I guess when it comes to music a lot of people are very open about those things in music and that's that's the reality and I think a lot of uh conversations that Charlotte or Charlie is talking about is there that are quite controversial including the last song <laughs> it's, it's quite controversial but I do want to say like we do have a responsibility to make people aware that it, that is such an issue nowadays in music industry and I'm it is a very difficult thing because like you go around and people are so many people are on it so many people are doing it and some people so many people think that it isn't it's a normal thing and you have to do it because everybody does it but I don't know if someone will ever watch this as being a musician. You don't have to do this. You don't have to follow that path to be famous or to achieve something or to make the connections. Like, you know what I mean? There's other ways around always. And uh, don't sacrifice yourself for for that. Let's not glorify it, please. Let's let's not glorify it and let's not make it a normal or a normal thing to to do and I th I'm very vocal about those things because I would love to in the future if I ever able to to create a foundation to help musicians that are struggling with addiction and who's uh, you know so many amazing musicians um, go through that stuff and not big ones that can afford it or anything like that but that would be something that I would love to you know help people with um anyways let's Let's uh, talk about the whole album. I was so hyped and I was loving it. Every single moment of this album was so exciting and so much fun. Okay. The production was so incredibly done. And I cannot, I cannot, like, the production in my eyes was 10 out of 10. Why? I'm going to explain to you. It was unexpected. In times, it was so unique, so interesting, so new. We're talking about pop here. Pop is such a difficult genre to create something that is or hasn't been heard before. And I think that, you know, I got inspired. I got so inspired by listening to this production because I want to go and produce and do some crazy stuff like this that just flow so melodically right. But also there are just moments where you get shocked by unexpected that's coming with this production. Lyrically speaking, I think the lyrics were quite raw and honest, but also uh, focus and talk about things that maybe many artists glorify or don't glorify or hide or not hide. Um, and Charlie's quite open about it and talking about them in a quite open manner, which I think is again controversial for some and some people won't like it but that's what she said that she wants people to be surprised and shocked and not just expect the expected you know vocally you know her sound is still there which i love that she's carrying her sound and uh, her vocals haven't changed much in that sense we still hear charlie but i do feel like she sounds a lot, I don't know, maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe she always sounded so British, but I do love the British influence in here. It just feels so, so British, <laughs> British culture in the sound. Like when I'm listening to it, it brings me back to the times or like I say, like it was a long time ago, but like to the club times or to the times when we rave and party and um, we're young and have fun and yeah. I definitely don't know what to say now what my favorite songs are. This is a this is a difficult one because I have to say like Club Classics 100% um still my fave. I do want to say that I really like the uh the lyrics in Apple that was really cool. Mean Girls was shocking. 365 
I loved the ending of it so much. It was such like energy flow of emotions in a good way. Like I just felt so alive. So I'm going to say that I definitely feel like the production was 10 out of 10. I think it was incredibly done. Lyrics were pretty good. Um, maybe 7 out of 10. I would say, uh, you know, it's difficult to write poetry when it's this type of a genre overall i think this is definitely four plus stars album probably one of the most exciting ones i heard recently i know this sounds maybe mm, controversial because there's so many great albums that came out dua lipa billy eilish taylor swift Ariana Grande, gosh, there's so many, Camilla came out with me, there's so many, so many, so many, you know, it's it's difficult to judge all of them, but I feel like this was something that personally to me is what made me excited, because I love to get to this level of production, and I love that, and I think that's why I'm feeling this so much, it's something new, something different, something exciting, and something I haven't heard before, so I I think it's it's definitely four plus um, four plus uh, star um, album. Is it five stars? I wouldn't say that it's. I I, I could never give anyone. <laughs> no, I mean I can't say it isn't. It could be five stars. It was really good. But let me know, guys, in the comments what you think and what was your favorite songs. Make sure you guys subscribe. And if you enjoy this review, we will do more of these. And they do take a very long time to film and edit. So I would absolutely love you to subscribe to this channel. It's just one click and we're trying to get 4,000 subscribers. So you could be one of them and you could react to more music like this. I would really appreciate it. But thank you guys. I will see you all very soon. And make sure you check out Charlie's new album as well as support all the new songs and new artists that are coming out with the music. Mwah. Love you.